So I create a lot of piano teaching printables, which means I also spend a lot of time printing them out and putting them together. Um, and I've created a few systems for myself in how to do that efficiently in a way that gets the best possible results. So for those of you that are a little bit perfectionist, um, maybe you'll get some tips out of this that will help you improve your systems if you're printing a lot of these games too. The first thing we're going to go through is how we actually print it out. So um, if you're using a printable from my site, it will most likely look something like this with instructions pages here. And the first thing we need to check is what we actually need to print and in what way. That will be under assembly here on most of the on most of the resources. So we see print out the game board, that's pages three to four, and then we're going to trim that and then print out the game cards, pages 5 to 10, double-sided. That's important there. Okay, so first thing to print would be the game board. We just go, if we're in Chrome or um, on a Mac, it'll be Command-P. On a PC, it'll be Control-P to get up the printer. And then we're going to select here, page range 3 to 4, and just print that. I suggest that if it's a game board like this one, that you print it on... A uh, paper that's at least 180 or 150 maybe um, grams GSM. So just a little bit heavier, like a card type paper is what you want there. Print out the game board. And then once you're done with that, once you sent that to the printer, go back to the file and look at the game cards. Um, in this case, we have a game board and game cards. So the game cards here are pages 5 to 10, and they're going to be double-sided. So I go Command-P, or I can use this button up here too. Now, so we select the range 5 to 10. Now, if your printer does two-sided printing, that's fantastic. Just do that. So if you want to print just, say, the odd pages from that range. You can't do that within the Chrome dialog box, which is the browser lots of people are using. Some will have that option. If you want to have that option, you can download it and print it again instead from your computer and you should see a drop down to choose odd pages or even pages. But if you don't have that, obviously you can just do five, seven, um, nine, like that. You just put commas in between them and now it's printing only the fronts of those cards. So we only want one copy of those. It's going to be color, which is great. And uh, the paper size is A4. So I just wanted to make a note here. If you're in the US, you're going to have letter size paper. And I su suggest that you select fit to page. So make sure that's selected if you're in the US. If you're not and you've got A4 paper, you shouldn't need to tick this actually because I've set it up to have borders so that there's enough space for most printers um, not to cut anything off even if you don't select fit to page. Um, but if you're in the US, definitely select that because the letter paper is just a slightly different aspect ratio. Okay, so we print that. And now what I like to do is print the title page on sticker paper. So this is a full sheet label. It's just a whole sheet that's a label. Um, and then I print the second page just on regular paper. So I'd print this, I'd put my sticker paper in the machine, print just page one, and then I'd put my regular paper in the machine and print page two. So that's everything printed out now and we're ready to start assembling. Okay, so once everything's printed out, the first thing I'm gonna do is trim down the cards. So these are the cards for double or nothing. We've got this on the front and I've reinserted them to put this on the back or use the double-sided option on your printer if it had it. And I'm just going to straighten these out. And on the front of the card, the card part you use to play the game, there's always these dotted lines. So you'll see them there. They might print a bit fainter or a bit clearer on your printer. It depends on the printer. And what I'm going to do first is trim all the way around the edge of all three pages at the same time. If the game you're working on has... Um, more than three pages, say more than four, I'd do them in two batches because otherwise it'll go um, not straight. And I'm using one of these. This is a type of craft knife um, with a 10A blade. These are my favorite ones. <laughs> they're the sharpest. You buy the blades, they're not that expensive at all um, and they just slip off the end 
and this is the best for firm grip. And then a metal ruler is really important. I like this one because it has cork on the back, um, which means it doesn't slip around on the page. If you're cutting a lot of these things, holding it down really tightly tends to have a strain on this arm right here after a while. So I just trim off the edge like that, make sure it's fully clean off and turn it around to trim each side. I now have my pages trimmed down to size, so I've just cut around the edge because it's the most efficient. And then I'm going to trim along the horizontal lines next. I like to do it the way that you'll leave the longer line to trim on its own. You'll see what I mean by that in a second, rather than having the shorter line, because it will be more accurate the more paper you have to hold on to with your ruler. And I'm doing all of this on a cutting mat. This one is extremely ancient, as you can see. It's got paint and stuff all over it, but it still does the job. So it's a cutting mat, or sometimes called a self-healing mat. Now, what I do here is a little bit picky. I could line this up with the dotted line and trim along there. And if I was a normal person, I probably would do that. Um, but uh, like I say, I'm very picky. So what I'm gonna do is go slightly over that line with my ruler and trim that. And then I'm gonna go slightly before it so that I get none of the dotted edge because I don't want any of that on my cards. But if this is just for your students and you're not gonna photograph them and stuff like that, probably it's okay to have a tiny bit of dotted line on your cards. Okay, so now I have these three groups um, like this and I just have to cut these apart finally along these lines. So you see now I'm left with a longer line than if I went lengthways first, I would have had a shorter line to hold on to. And I do the same thing again here. So you could just line up with the dotted line like that. I'm gonna go slightly over. And slightly before like that. It's literally just about a millimeter over and under the line. Okay, so there's all my cards, that's what they look like. And they're all separated off from each other. They're fairly neatly exactly the same size. And to be honest, what kid is gonna notice a difference there if there is a tiny discrepancy? Um, so if I'm gonna laminate these, which a lot of you will want to, I would now laminate those. So I take a laminating sheet and I put these in individually. Again, this is picky. If you wanna save some time, you can laminate it first and then just trim the cards down after you've laminated it because my way you're going to have to cut it twice but um, the way the reason I like to do this is I want the rounded edges on these if I cut it plain directly into the sheet I'm not going to have rounded edges and it is going to peel more easily when I'm laying out these for lamination I'll use both edges so the middle one can just be somewhere in the middle um, but you want to use this cornered edge, to save that little bit of cutting time. Even if this isn't in the middle, that doesn't really matter, but it should be straight to the next one, because that's going to be easier, and you're using this edge as well. From there, I would feed this through my laminator. So once I have it laid out like this, I have the corners like this. I'm not extremely um, straight or exactly identical on every side, but they are roughly laid out in a way that I'm going to be able to trim along the lines when they're laminated. And I'm using all four of the round corners to save myself a little bit of cutting time, which you're going to see in a second. When it comes to feeding this through the laminator, Obviously fairly straightforward, it is a little bit awkward when you've got the cutout cards. So um, 
If you're having trouble picking it up and keeping them where they are, you might try using a page like this and feeding them through together. Now, if you have heavy laminating pouches, um, like the maximum your laminator will take, don't do that. It will not be happy about it because it'll be too thick. But if you have the thin ones, thinner than your laminator will take, that can be an option if it's difficult to pick this up and feed it through neatly. Okay, so I have my laminated cards out now. You can see they're roughly lined up. I haven't been very exact, but we're gonna trim them down now and make them look a bit neater as we go. So first thing to do is trim along the length, just like we did when they were outside of the lamination. Like that. And I'm gonna trim here. You always want to have as much under your ruler as you can, which is why I'm not doing it the other way around. Okay, so this is them all trimmed down with a little border around the edge. So I'm leaving, I'd say about three mil. Um, an eighth of an inch I think that is um, but like I mentioned we've got these sharp corners and they're actually quite pointy so especially if this is going to I mean I do it for all my games but especially if it's going to be for like preschoolers I don't want them there so what I do now is I take a scissors take a scissors and literally just cut a little corner off that Obviously this is a little bit tedious, but you'll see I now have these rounded corners on the cards. I've been quite, you know, loose about the exact shape of them, but the important part to me is just that they're not sharp. They don't, you know, spike into your thumb when you do that. So they're just rounded edges and I've left the ones that were already on the laminating sheet um, as they were, because those are the perfect round little corners. Just to note on that, that you can buy laminating pouches that are this size which is the size of most of my game cards. It's the size of a business card, roughly, so that pouch should fit inside them. Um, the reason I don't is purely because they're too expensive. They're crazy expensive. They're basically almost the same price as a full sheet for one little pouch anywhere I've looked for them. So that's why I don't use those. Those are so much more convenient. So if you value time more than money, well, first of all, just send these to a print shop if you really value uh, your time more than your money. Um, but I do so many of these that I just can't afford to buy those little pages. But it is an option that's there for you, especially if you get a great deal on them. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to trim down is these instructions. Now, on this page, I always put how to play up the top if you're using one of my games. You'll have how to play here. Then you'll have assembly and then learning objectives. The only part I actually want to keep in my folder is the top part. These are really just for when I'm printing it out and getting acquainted with the game. But I do want to put the how to play instructions in the folder because I lend these games to students. So even if I can remember how this goes, their parents certainly doesn't know unless they have instructions. So for this one, since I don't have a dotted line, I'm going to line it up to the cutting mat edges. And then I just pick a sensible point here to create a straight line. Now, what I do is I throw this bottom part away and the top part is what I'm going to put in the folder. My next job to use is the title page. As I mentioned, I put this on sticker paper, so it normally have some kind of backing on it like this one here, might be a different brand. Um, Q Connect is the cheapest here, so that's why I go with that. Um, and this has nice rounded edges, so even though I've printed this 
I don't need to trim anything down because it's actually slightly inset, so this is my favorite type to use. And then I take one of these plastic folder wallets and I open this up. And again, because I'm a bit picky, I'm going to take this ruler and put it up the top here, line it up with the top so that I'm two centimeters down. Um, you could use an inch if they're here in the US. And now I have a straight line and I normally go uh, two centimeters across because I know that works out that it's roughly in the middle. It's not perfect, but it looks the same on each game this way. So I start peeling off my sticker paper like this and I just do the top part first. Stick this first part down and go all the way down so that you crease the sticker paper and then you can start peeling a little bit more at a time and hopefully not get any bubbles. So you see that's not exactly in the center, um, but it does gives me a uniform thing that is, you know, looks neat and tidy and straight. And I'm gonna trim down the game board now. This game board is in two parts. So this is the way it's gonna piece together like that. So all we need to trim, all we have to trim is this part here. Now you may wish to trim around the edge if you want it to look seamless at the edge. You can also leave the white border because it is the same all around. So it doesn't actually look bad if you have the white border. So I'll show you what that looks like first. We'll just trim these edges here. And I'll do these separately because um, printers can be a bit finicky and they might not be exactly the same. So first I look at the front and I check that they are going to line up if I just line up the pages. Now they are in this case, so that's perfect. I'm gonna flip these over. I'm gonna take a tiny little bit of tape and tape just in one spot. I like to leave a tiny gap, just, I mean, less than a millimeter, just almost nothing between. That'll help it to fold. If I go right up to the edge, it's gonna kind of crease on itself when you fold it back over. Um, and we wanna store it A4 size. So I put that tiny bit of tape on there and then I flip it over just to check again. They're lined up pretty well, that's nice. I like to use just regular invisible tape if I'm not laminating the game, because that'll stick fine. If you're going to laminate it, I recommend you use duct tape. So I'd still do this little bit of invisible tape or cell tape or whatever you have, and then flip it over and put duct tape all along the side. That's what I use when I'm laminating it. First, I'm not gonna laminate this game board, so I'm just gonna use invisible tape. Now I go right over each edge like that. I'm just going to trim that off now. So I flip it back over and if I'm going to use it with the white border I can just trim this down, just cut that off with the scissors. If I'm not going to use the white border here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fold this in half now and I'm going to trim these together. So you see when I do that I have this nice even edge and it's much easier because the full length of this would be longer than my ruler. So trimming them folded over actually works out better. So that is all my game pieces. This is my game board all finished. Like I said, you can leave that white border around the edge. Totally fine. I'm gonna fold this up. What I'm gonna do is pop this inside here along with my game instructions. I'm gonna put an elastic band around the game cards to keep them together, whether they're laminated or not. These are the unlaminated ones. Pop them in there. And the other thing I'm gonna put in this folder are um, game counters and a die. So when we play this in the studio, we actually normally use my little Iwako erasers, the Japanese erasers that everyone loves. Those are awesome. I do not have enough of those to put one in every single game, however. So I found these foam beads. They're literally just foam, squishy foam beads. 
They're nice and small, they work for all the games, and they came in a huge pack in um, Mr. Price, which is like a dollar store equivalent over here. And they fit perfectly in the folder. So the reason I put those in there is because I lend this to students to play at home. So I always like to put in counters so that they have something to use in case we don't have the erasers that day or they're playing it at home. And a die, because you always like to have everything ready to go and close it up. Et voila, there's the game, all pieced together. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions at all about my system or if you have a suggestion for how I should be doing things better. I'd love to hear that.